Today in our 2017 Jeep Renegade, we're going to be installing Kurt's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver, part number C13269. And this is what it's going to look like when it's installed. It is going to be visible underneath the bumper here. The cross tube is going to stick out. But when you approach it, you won't really notice it until you get close because it's so far back. This is a Class 3 2-inch by 2-inch hitch receiver, so it's going to be great for all of your needs, from bike racks, cargo carriers, to towing. It'll handle everything. It features plate style safety chain loops, and it's got a nice enough opening to where it'll accommodate just about any style safety chain. It uses a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now one of these doesn't come included with your hitch, but you can pick one up here at eTrailer.com using part number PC3. It features a 525 pound tongue weight, and that's the force going down on top of the receiver, and a 3500 pound gross towing capacity. That's how much that it can pull behind it. Now you do want to check your vehicle's owner's manual to ensure you're not exceeding its towing capacities. And do remember that Kurt does recommend to use a stabilization strap when hauling any non-trailer loads. That's basically anything without wheels. And now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the ground to the top inside edge of the receiving tube, it's going to measure about 10 and a quarter inches. This is important when determining if you need to drop, rise, or raise shank on any of your accessories. Since it sits pretty low to the ground, it is recommended that you get a raised shank on any of your accessories such as your bike rack or cargo carrier. And from the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, it measures about six and a half inches. This is important when determining if any of your folding accessories can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. We'll begin our installation underneath the vehicle on the driver's side here at the back corner. There's going to be some plugs in the frame rail that we're going to need to remove. You'll need to remove the plug located at the bottom and both plugs located on the outside of the frame rail. You'll repeat that same process on the other side. You're going to see a band of caulk that runs around the frame here. This can interfere with our hitch, making it difficult to install. So you can take a razor knife and we're just going to scrape that off to make it as flush as possible. We're just going to do this on both sides, just around this hole here. We'll now need to enlarge this hole to make it large enough to fit our spacers and carriage bolt heads through. So you can use a file, a Dremel tool, or a step bit to enlarge this to the right size. There is no exact size, just as long as they'll fit up in there. Now we're going to feed our fish wire in to pull our hardware through. You're going to want to start with the holes in the side of your frame first. Take the coil then, push it in through the hole, and work it back towards the hole that we enlarged. Once you've got it pulled through, slide on a spacer and follow that with a carriage bolt. Thread that onto the coil then. Push the spacer up into the frame, then your carriage bolt next. And just pull that out, working it back towards your hole. Now we are going to want to just poke that right inside the frame and just leave it sitting inside there to make it easier to get our hitch up. We'll do the same process for the other holes in the side of the frame. And for the bolt in the lower portion of your frame, you'll take your coiled wire, slide the spacer on it, thread the carriage bolt on, then you'll push the bolt up in the frame, followed by the spacer, and just pull it back down. And you repeat that on the other side. Now with an extra set of hands, we'll lift our hitch into position. Make sure to feed your fish wire through the appropriate holes for the bolts that go there. You'll want to get your passenger side on first to get it over the exhaust and then work your driver's side up. Now you can get one of your nuts installed on each side on the bottom. Now there is a spacer that goes in between the nut and the hitch. We're just putting the nut on for now to hold it up to make it easier to get the rest of our hardware pulled through. Now you'll want to get your side bolts pulled through. Once you've got those pulled through, you can take your pull wire off of them, making sure not to drop the nut back inside the frame. There is a small access door that you can take the screws out of to give yourself a little bit more room to get your arm in there and kind of see what you're doing. There's one of these on each side. You'll take out the plastic screw at the top of the Phillips head. After you've got the top one out, you can then just turn it sideways and that'll let you get your arm in there. I'm going to repeat that on the other side as well. Now you can go back and take the nuts that we had just momentarily attached to hold it in place. Take those off, slide your spacer on, 
and then thread your nut back on. We'll do this on the other side as well. Now we can tighten down all of our hardware using a 19 millimeter socket and maybe a wrench for your side bolts. Then torque all of your hardware to the specifications and the instructions. And we'll repeat this for all remaining hardware. Now if you have the Trailhawk Edition, it'll install in a similar manner, except you won't use the hardware that comes with your hitch. You'll already have bolts inside the frame, you'll just unscrew those and reuse those to attach your hitch. And that completes our installation of Kurtz Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2017 Jeep Renegade.